From the great Commonwealth of Virginia, Congressman Bob, Bob Good joins us. Congressman, hope you're doing well today. Doing well, Todd. Great to be with you, and happy post-President's Day. Yes, sir. Likewise, uh, C- Congressman, This uh, we've been watching President Biden overseas, and I get, sometimes I get the impression that he likes Ukraine more than he likes us. Well, he certainly goes uh, to places uh, in Europe, Ukraine, Poland, and so forth, that he, uh, in, in direct contradiction to where he, he doesn't go in the United States, he doesn't go to the border, he doesn't go to East Palestine, uh, Ohio. He doesn't seem to care about the safety and security of Americans. Now, you just, I think the crux of the issue is why is America borrowing, borrowing, that's the key word there, borrowing to provide 80% of the international funding uh, for Ukraine? $113 billion last year sent there, which equates to about $260 million per congressional district. I think if you had the constituents of my congressional district and most congressional districts, and you had to look at we're going to vote on whether or not to, spend, to send $260 million from you uh, to borrow to send to Ukraine, or are we going to spend it or invest it within your district in whatever things might benefit the people of the Virginia's 5th District or whatever district that we're speaking about? And, you know, we're already on the hook, as you know, Todd, to uh, defend or pledge to defend 30 or so NATO countries, some of which are just a few hundred thousand in population who don't meet, most of which who don't meet, of course, the 200 percent military investment commitment that's supposed to be required of membership. Uh, you know, NATO re, you know, rejected Ukraine as a member. Uh, Europe is not tangibly supporting Ukraine. Um, and yet the United States is borrowing to almost unilaterally fund this proxy war in Ukraine. Meanwhile, you have American people who are suffering. Uh, you've got these uh, these disasters. Uh, I mean, we've had what there was another big train derailment today. Uh, you've got all this. You've got this chaos in this country. Uh, you've got a military that uh, they're having to. Many of them are having to rely on welfare, public assistance to make ends meet. And and Biden's going over there and announcing, okay, we're going to give you another half a billion dollars on top of the billions we've already given you. It does show an administration out of touch with even just the symbolism, as you reference, on going on President's Day, making a trip to Ukraine when he has nothing to point to in terms of success or achievement or anything that he's done to make the American people better. This is a president that makes Carter, God bless Jimmy Carter uh, right now, but makes Carter look competent, makes Obama look moderate by comparison clearly the worst president of my lifetime. You know, I was born during the LBJ administration, but clearly the worst president among uh, that, I've, that I've ever seen witness in my lifetime. The only president that I'm aware of historically that has intentionally harmed the United States just for the border alone, just for the border alone, what he's done with the six million illegals who've invaded not to mention willfully, purposefully weakening our military. You know, how does the $113 billion that we've sent to Ukraine diminished our capacity to fight the climate war or to fight racism in the military, the two biggest threats that he's identified to the military uh, in, in his obviously uh, misguided thought process there and what you know, his administration, you know, being beholden to the, to the radical left and the climate war, so-called, and the war against racism, institutional racism within the military, within our country. But uh, the symbolism is not lost that there he is, instead of trying to help his own country, being concerned about the safety and security of the United States, he continues to weaken and undermine that while going overseas to focus on um, our nation borrowing to fund the security of another nation. What what really strikes me here, and the irony, of course, the fight in, in Ukraine is really all about border security, and Russia violated the, the, the sovereign border of Ukraine. That is the same issue we are dealing with here in this country, and yet the Biden administration and the Democrats refuse to address the invasion of our country. No, no question about that. And, and you have, and what is the end game? What is the exit strategy? What is the determination of success for the United States with our involvement over there and the fear that we all reasonably have of the escalation of our involvement? there and the escalation of other countries, let's say China, whomever getting involved, 
Uh, in Ukraine, you know, it, it, we can condemn Russia as an evil regime. We can condemn the ruthless, brutal attack. We can wish and pray for success on behalf of Ukraine to defeat Russia without – but while being clear-eyed and, and recognizing that Ukraine is not a country that shares our values, it is not a – constitutional republic like ours. You look at how uh, they have tr treated political opponents in Ukraine, how they've suppressed the media in Ukraine, how they've diminished religious freedom there in Ukraine. And, you know, as we've tried to have at least accountability and transparency, Republicans have for the 113 billion, the funds that have been sent there, Democrats have resisted that. You also have to wonder how the Biden administration, how Biden himself, the president, is compromised with his uh, actions towards Ukraine based on the involvement of his family in corrupt business deals in Ukraine. When you have his family, his son, his brother, his family making millions of dollars uh, off of Ukraine, and then you see billions of dollars redirected to Ukraine, borrowed, again, borrowed by the American taxpayer to send to Ukraine, uh, you have to wonder uh, how his being compromised might influence the decisions that he's making relative to Ukraine. And, Congressman, of course, uh, this hearing uh, at the border, are the Democrats, have, w w where do they stand on this? Hearing, I'm hearing reports the Democrats are planning not to show up. Why would they go to the border? I've been to the border five times in my first two years in Washington uh, just to try to keep attention on what I believe is perhaps the greatest issue facing the country, the invasion of the southern border. Kudos to Kevin McCarthy, Jim Jordan, for bringing that hearing down to uh, the border to do that. Uh, but when you visit with Border Patrol and lo local law enforcement and and uh, those ranchers and it, it, people who live at the border, they tell you Democrats never come. So it's not surprising that Democrats would not want to be part of a hearing at the southern border when all of them, all of them are guilty of supporting the policies that have compromised the safety and security of the United States with the border. And, of course, now we've got tenfold increase in invasion of illegals across our northern border. While it's still a fraction of the southern border, we're seeing a tenfold increase in the northern border as well. All right. Well, Congressman, we appreciate the updates on both of those stories, and we appreciate the great work you're doing as a member of the House Freedom Caucus. Well, thank you, Todd. Appreciate you having me on and keep up the fight, my friend. All right. Uh, Congressman Bob Good from the great Commonwealth of Virginia.